Cyclocross friends, and welcome to CX's and O's, where we're going to break down features, strategies, and race decisions that affect the outcome of the biggest cyclocross races in the world. On today's episode, we are in Neil at the 2020 Jamar Cross, and our key feature is a long berm section with two distinct lines. Our goal is to analyze if and how this feature helps decide the race. The riders hit the berm feature two minutes before the end of the lap and one minute before an equally decisive sand section. The track set up in Neil keeps viable passing lanes at a premium, so being first off the berm and into the last two minutes puts you in a strong position to win, especially if the sand is your strength. All right, the leaders are hitting the berm for the first time in the race, so let's join the action and break it down. Yara Castellin leads the field with Salen Del Carmen primetime Alvarado behind her. Anne-Marie Wurst is third, Manenbacher is fourth, and Denise Betsema is fifth. The riders are on the high line when all of a sudden, poof, Betsema disappears. If we roll it back, we can see what happened. At the third Willie Mason's banner, Betsema dips down and takes the low line. We can't really see it on this view because the main players are still up top. Skipping ahead to lap two, and Betsema leads the way and dives down to the low line at the same spot as lap one. Alvarado is on her wheel but stays high. She's surely taking notes, however, as Betsema is able to maintain her lead coming out of the feature on the low line. On lap three, Betsema leads, Castellan is second, and Alvarado is third. Betsema dive bombs, and Alvarado follows suit as Castellan stays high. Betsema is able to keep her lead, and Alvarado is able to overtake Castellan. The note here for Alvarado is the low line may give her an edge and is a place on this track to make a strategic pass. We're coming into lap four. It's the penultimate lap and the selection has been made. Lucinda Brand leads the way and stays topside. Betsma has her spot dialed and dives to the bottom. Alvarado on the success of lap three follows suit, but Brand rides the top more aggressively than Castline did the lap before and is able to hold off the lowlanders. For Alvarado, some calculus needs to be worked out before the final lap. Is the top side faster, or was Betsema holding her up on the low line? Which brings us to that ultimate last lap. As I said at the top, this feature is the linchpin to the win. Lead coming out of here, and you can dictate the race to the finish. Everyone has done their homework, and this is the final exam. Picking the correct line and executing it will be key for who exits first. Brand leads into the feature, and Alvarado has moved into second. Betsema is in third. That removes the biggest hurdle Alvarado had on the lap before. With Betsema in third, she can concentrate on Brand. Brand stays high, and Alvarado, with nobody in front of her this lap, takes the low line. Brand is motoring at the top, and it's a drag race to the finish. Which line is faster, and who will exit first? From a scientific standpoint, it's hard to say, but from a practical standpoint, the top line is the better line because Brand executes it to perfection. If we take a second look, we can see that Alvarado has her rhythm briefly disrupted and she coasts for a few feet, and that is all Brand needs to gain the advantage. Without that brief hesitation, Alvarado may have been able to surge ahead, but she doesn't. Execution and the smallest of hiccups are the difference as Brand shoots off the feature and maintains the lead, using her downhill momentum to go all in for the final minute of the race. By the time she gets to the sand, she's in complete control and is able to hold off Alvarado at the line. When originally watching this race, I noted this spot as a great tactical decision point. But after breaking it down, the main takeaway is that you can meticulously game plan, you can analyze and calculate the fastest lines and the key points in a race, but in the end, it comes down to execution. Miss one pedal rotation, and that may be the difference between winning and losing. At least that's my takeaway. I want to know what yours is. Leave a comment below and let me know. Also, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share with your cyclocross friends. Until next time.